all you really need to know. Math that sign. That returns a double, so we cast it in a float at the very beginning. Now, it wants a double to pass to it. It's an angle measured in radians. So we're just going to use the game time, that total game time, and we want it in seconds. You can pass a total milliseconds, but it'll bubble a lot faster. Total minutes, it'll bubble a lot slower times 30. We want to bubble a little bit faster than if we just pass total seconds alone. Now, we do not want it to bubble and then reach to a low scale to where you can barely see it and then bubble back. So we plus one. Math that sign goes from zero to one to zero to negative one to zero to one and repeats. So when it reaches one, it'll pulse at zero. When it reaches, uh, I'm sorry, when it reaches zero, it'll pulse at one. When it reaches negative one, it'll pulse at zero. When it reaches positive one, it'll pulse at two. So we'll get two times the scale effect when it reaches one. And when it reaches negative one, the scale will be the original size as we have it set. Okay. Now that's a pulse. Now we need to set the scale. And again, we need to do that quick little if else is selected. One plus pulse times 0.5f. This is just more enhancements to the pulse. It'll just give you a nice effect. You can manipulate that to change the scale we are looking for and manipulate that to increase the scale we're looking for. So so manipulate these values to change the effect to your liking. And if it's not selected, 0.8f. I like to have it a little bit smaller than normal to give it that little dramatic effect you see here. Okay. So that, that was a bit complicated. So now we need to do the sprite batch to draw string. We finally get to the draw part. We need to pass the sprite font. The sprite font object, the entry text, which we have it passed here, and the sprite batch is passed here. The sprite font is in the menu screen itself, so that's not passed. The entry is passed. We need the position of the object. We need the color of the object. And we need to go to the fifth yeah the fifth overrided function the rotation will be zero origin will be origin scale will be scale spread effects dot none and layer depth will be zero so all that work is in the draw entry but we're not done yet, we need to go to the draw. We need to pass it the draw entry. Or we need to call the draw entry. Sprite batch game time entry is menu entries sub i. And here is why we use the four instead of the four each. Comma position, comma is selected. Now after we do that we need to push the next entry down. So position.y plus equals sprite font dot line spacing. 
And then we just keep on looping that. When we're done, we want to do the sprite batch dot end. So that is it for the menu screen. So you're still with me? I know it's a lot of complex stuff here, but you can add or remove some of the functionality to make it a bit easier on yourself or add some functionality to make it more complex if you're into that sort of thing. But it shouldn't be too complicated. Just mess around with the values and you'll see what the desired result is going to be if you change values for anything here. Change that and you can change these and just play around with the mini screen but of course you need a derived screen in order to view the effects so let's go into the screens folder go to add class now this is going to be a derivative of menu screen so the first menu screen you'll think of is a main menu main menu screen and that's going to be public class go and change the namespaces and that's going to be a derivative of menu screen and let's implement the data okay so you're probably wondering why we need to do more stuff but this is a very powerful technique. All we need to do is set the menu entries to whatever we want. We need to select the selected color, the non-selected color, the start position. We need to add some stuff here to determine what we want to do when menu is selected. We want to set some stuff here to determine what we want to do when we cancel the menu. So that's all we need to do for the menu screen, the main menu screen. So I like to do all the initializing inside the, the main menu screen constructor. You can use the initialize method if you want. But I'm going to use a constructor for that when we don't have two additional methods to worry about. So right now, let's just worry about adding the menu entries. Adding some stuff to there. And it's a list so we can call dot add and it's gonna want a string. So let's say we we'll start game for a menu, the first menu entry. And to know on the sample, I had it pretty useless menu entries. They all do the same thing and stuff like that. So for the tutorial, I'm going to avoid that and show you how to do various things. So the next one we're just going to add two here will be just exit. So that's two menu entries. So after the menu entries are done, we need to set the selected and non-selected color. Selected is equal to color, and it's not going to like that until we add the using color dot yellow. Non-selected the color dot white. You can change these here. You can set them independent. You can have a pause screen that has a red and blue or for anything else you want. Finally, we want the start position equal to some amount. And this just holds the first menu entry's location. Vector 2, I'm going to choose a weird amount 100 to come 200 since that was in the sample. Now, we need to override a few things. Public override. I said in the menu screen that we do not know what we are going to load. That's true, but we are inside the main menu screen, so now we we do know what we're going to load here. We delete that. Content manager. Add the using content. 